Hey, it's Ninja Boy. Welcome back once again to uh, Mario Maker. So, back to this level, the Forgotten Ghost House. And this is about the third time I've recorded this video. And there's a reason behind that. The first take, I didn't like at all, and so I scrapped it. The second take, I got done with it, and... During editing, I'm like, I, do, I don't, I just didn't like it. I felt bad. And there's a reason why I felt bad. So, this level, this level in itself, has been bugging me. And it's been bugging me because there's something about it that I didn't like that rubbed me the wrong way. And I could not for the longest time since I played it figure out what exactly it was that bugged me so much about this level. I could not figure it out because the level is not badly designed. Aesthetically it looks very pleasing. It's a very very well built level but just something about it was just off and I could not put my finger on what until I went back and I looked at the level again um, just after after playing it I went back and kind of looked at it I uh, looked at the recording and all that and I realized what I didn't like about it and what was so bad. So the first things first, coming from the creator, this level is supposed to be slow paced. It's supposed to be played slow. The problem is it's not built to be slow. Even though it's the designer, the creator here, built the level to be slow, the level's not built to be slow. So the level drops you off into a watery place where the ghost house is. Okay, you float down. You go in a pipe. Right off the bat, you are introduced to these fish. You rush over them. You rush over them because if you don't, they're going to attack you. They're going to come up after you and attack you. Granted, very easy to jump over, but you are showed to rush. You are shown that you need to go faster than the fish and get over them. Okay, so it's a fast level. You enter this pipe. You are then greeted by two bonefish, which again teach you you need to go quickly. You need to get over this uh, little donut ring and get to the pipe so you don't get hurt. Okay, Again, you're faced with a dry bones coming right at you when you exit the pipe. I need to quickly get over that dry bones and continue on. So again, fast paced. Then you get over here. Over here breaks the pacing because you have to slow down and you have to wait. That pacing continues onto not really this screen because this is just a transition but onto this screen where again you are faced with a boo ring that you have to wait especially if you're big however those fish that are coming at you are coming at you you need to rush past those fish so then you're introduced to going fast and again with the conveyor you are introduced to going fast. It now becomes a fast-paced level again. After waiting and being slow, it's a fast-paced level. Then, with these little boo rings, or boo carousel, whatever you want to call them, actual rings with boos on them, you have to go slow on a fast-moving conveyor. There are so many mixed signals that this level gives you when it comes to what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. 
that it, it gets a little overwhelming and confusing. Another big thing, which I'll point out in a, in a second, is you need to hit that switch and you need to get these coins. However, you cannot go too far ahead of yourself. And the reason for that is you actually need something that's in this door. Now it may not seem like it, it may seem very trivial, but one thing that it does that the game doesn't really show you very well or doesn't give you a good impression enough for you to remember it is inside this door there's a door that you need a p-switch to get into so once you get a p-switch and you go into this door you are introduced to a pipe this pipe gives you a leaf so that's all well and good you now have a leaf but this door is so forgettable because it's up against the edge and you have never had to go in there until now. It is so forgettable that you, you won't even see it. And what will happen is you will get your P-switch, you will either hit it up there or take it down here, and you see this wall of bricks. P-switch plus bricks equal coins. You then press it, collect the coins, jump over here because you see some more bricks, and continue over here collecting the coins. Now, in hindsight, you don't think about going back to check out that other door. You're already progressing into a new area. That other door must have been a bonus. So, with that being a bonus, you continue forward. You then get dry bone or dry fish bones whatever um, that you have to jump over quick pacing yet again in a slow level then you get to this room that if you do not have relief there is no way to do you cannot do this without the leaf but without knowing that you need the leaf You'll come in here and like, okay, Arrow, where's the invisible block? What do I need to do? You come in this door and you're like, okay, where's the thing? You jump around and you can't find it. You can't find the thing at all whatsoever. That is not smart design. You make a door that is very non-obvious and very easily forgettable. Now, if that door was next to the giant dry bones, for example, and it was the only door right there, and there was no door behind it, then you would have a door that's rememberable. Because there's a dry bones and a door. Something is special about that door. Something is special about that door. Now... When you have that, you have the door there with the dry bones, you then have to continue and you keep thinking, what's behind that door? Why would there be a dry bones guardian guarding it and why would it be in the middle of the level? There must be something there. Where the door is currently, you have a door right next to it. You see the door blocked off and say, okay, that's a door. You go in the one that's not blocked off. You get the mushroom, you repeat the entire level again with a springboard. Now you're not thinking about that door. You're thinking about the springboard and the fact you need to use it on the arrow at the end to jump up to uh, the upper part of the level to continue. So once you get there, you jump up, get the P-switch, you don't think about that door again. That door is meaningless to you. It's very forgettable. So... This level has two big things going against it. One, the pacing is all over the place when it's supposed to be a slow level. It's not slow, the pacing is all over the place. The second thing it has is that door that is crucial to beating the level. The only way you can beat the level is so forgettable that it really just needs to be moved. 
And I am going to go... Actually, I was going to boot up the level and go into the editor and show how I would do it, but I don't I don't really feel that necessary. I've I've said what I want to say about this level. It's not a bad level. Aesthetically, it's very pleasing. The level is built perfectly fine except for the pacing confusion and that one door. Everything else is perfectly fine except those two things. The level doesn't know what pace it really wants to be and that door is forgettable. If that door wasn't forgettable, the pacing being off could be uh, discounted. The pacing could be less impactful. But because that door is so forgettable and you have to play the level twice to get back to the door to be able to use it, that's where the entire level just becomes a drag and the pacing becomes very important. Important. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. This has been Ninja Boy, and luckily I don't feel bad about this one this time because I'm honestly nicer than I was the last video, and I'm very glad I redid it. Anyway, as I said, this has been Ninja Boy, and I will be back later with more Super Mario Maker. See you guys then.